a KQED television production. Another umami bomb. <laughs> umami bomb. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by support for KQED comes from Total Wine and More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine and More, now with six Bay Area locations. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Integrated Resources Group has a vast selection of epic porcelain slabs and pentel quartz surfaces for today's modern designs. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. We're taking the time to revisit three special restaurants from past seasons. And as we step back to places that highlight old world techniques, we discover the leaps forward they've made in their use of fresh, responsibly grown ingredients. All of the places we visit this time provide their versions of new American fare. Back in season five, physician Marie President brought her Menlo Park destination to our attention. Her place embraces produce from local organic sources. They even grow some of it right there at the restaurant as they want to preserve the taste of the pristine ingredients they serve. With a long list of signature dishes and devilish desserts, they don't disappoint at Flea Street Cafe. I'm Jessie Ziff Cole, and about 35 years ago, after just getting off welfare and hitchhiking and somehow finding myself in California where I belong, I opened one of the first organic restaurants with my former husband, Bob Cool, and it was a commitment to our staff and using real food, something my father taught me. When you're in community and you're doing business, you do it with integrity, and because it was food, that meant organic, clean, healthy, locally produced food. And from late to the train, we kept opening restaurants with the same sentiment, and here we are at Flea Street Cafe. All of our sources are mostly local, and we try to stick with that um, as local as, as close as possible from the restaurant. So we have a garden right outside our restaurant, and when things come up, we just pick it, bring it, and cook it. I consider our food to be comfort food made sexy. We don't overdo it, and what we really want people to feel when they're eating is nourished, nurtured, and like they've eaten something so delicious, but so alive, and that's actually very comforting. Now Marie, Flea Street Cafe, and really all of Jesse Cool, the owner and chef's um, restaurants, and endeavors are focused on local, sustainable, organic produce and food items. Yeah, they are. It's, it's, it's very important for her to um, use products that are responsible, right. uh, local, uh, fresh, uh, and flavorable. And that's the reason you keep going back and back to you Flea know, Street? You that's the reason I keep going back and back. Of course, I live about a block away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that would help. But you know, there's responsibility, and f for me, that's important. Right. Um, I've never had a bad meal there. Mm -hmm. The staff is wonderful, welcoming. I call it uh, uh, comfort food, but high-end comfort food. Yeah. Right. High quality. Yeah. High, high quality. quality. Mm -hmm. and not cheap, but well, worth it. Well, it was, no. yeah, it's it was not cheap. It. 
I had a great tossed salad that was a combination of radicchio, parsley, and a few other fresh greens with the vinaigrette that had just the right bite to yeah. set off the really great mm -hmm. organic greens. And then I had the halibut cheeks on mm -hmm. farro with the butternut wow, squash. And let me tell you, if you've dish. never had cheeks, whether it be <laughs> beef cheeks or halibut mm -hmm. cheeks, it is the sweetest oh, meat. Yes, in, in sushi restaurants, they have it also, too. I think it's the, mm -hmm. the, the tuna cheeks, but mm -hmm. boy, the halibut cheeks were oh, gorgeous. That's my favorite dish. On farro, mm -hmm. which I was unfamiliar with. I guess it's an Italian grain, mm -hmm. which has really right. a lot of rich flavor. Right. And the preparation was perfect, a little crispy and tender and... Yeah, I didn't share too much, but I let her have a couple of bites. <laughs> well, I'll keep Marie away from you. Yeah, well, no, I'm talking about my wife. Marie, I, I'm not even going to dinner with her because I know I'm not going to eat anything. Oh, that's right. She's going to have it all, exactly. <laughs> and you no, said this was delicious. your favorite dish when you go. Is the, this is, is the my favorite cheese? dish. It's a regular dish then it's, on it's there? A regular, it's a fairly regular. They, they they have it on the menu quite often. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is right. that what so you got? When no, you actually, well, I had the Dungeness crab with the sweet potato on the... Um, roasted cauliflower. Mm. That was the bomb. And then we, <laughs> it, we were so surprised because usually you, know, you She's going to use crab that on cake. her menu now. That, that was the bomb. Was the bomb. Um. <laughs> and then, um, but usually, you know, you get this the crab cake and there's nothing to it, but this had little capers around it and the, the sauce was just fantastic. We were just like, wow. And then we had the nerve to have the uh, <laughs> fried sardines. Oh, delicious. Oh, those well, were we just like, my mouth. Yeah, but when they're fresh, wow. I've never yeah, had so sardines yeah. before. So that mm -hmm. was my new thing. And I was like, I looked at him and I went, oh. And she said, try it. I go, okay. So I tried bones it. Bones and everything, and it, right? Bones and everything. Absolutely oh, yeah. fantastic. And there's another, the bomb. I was right. just going to go to the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it was so Got that nice little crunch. Good. It crunch. works, it works. It was exactly. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And then we went on and we had the ribs. And I ordered the wild, wild pasta because it said it's back. And I didn't really like the wild, wild pasta. I thought it could have <laughs> used some salmon or chicken or something. It was a little too vegetarian for me. Mm -hmm. But it was good. And, but it just needed something to add on to it. Well, but Jesse the, does Jesse does mm -hmm. food on the menu for folks who right. are vegetarian, so that so that everyone can sort of it's enjoy. Got, it's the, a destination uh, certainly right. for vegetarians. It is. Too. It is. But, but it the is. short ribs right. were great. <gasps> They're fantastic. Oh, I, I was still because oh. Vivian, my friend, ordered it, and I was just eating off her plate. <laughs> and the greens were great. It was oh. just. The, the the ribs were tender and and the sauce we were taking bread and scooping up the sauce. Mm -hmm, yeah, it was, I, I was eating the sauce uh, over my wife's place. Yeah, and she it didn't finish fantastic. it all, so I'm gonna help myself. You're dumping there. in and yeah. you're grabbing it. It's yeah. not yeah. the cheapest restaurant. No, no. but uh, obviously with it. the ingredients but that that she's that using, she's using. Yeah. Yeah. It, it merits it. it. As, a, as a chef, I would be proud to call that yeah. my own right. food. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. I'm <laughs> gonna tell you though, we didn't order any wine. We had a. She had Are a you feeling Mary. okay? I'm fine. <laughs> she had a Bloody Mary, but I wanted an apple martini. Mm -hmm. And so he comes back. My waiter comes back. And he goes, uh, "We don't have any apple martini mix." I'm like, "They don't have any so, mixes." Wait, no, no. So you know what he does? He goes back to the bartender. The bartender takes his apple and yep. mashes yes, it. Yes, that's right. And he fixes his organic martini. Probably the best one you ever had. It right? was. <laughs> and then I had go. a little cup on the sides. I could pour more in. Oh, nice. oh, yeah. It was fantastic. <laughs> I was. Just, we had to go talk to the bartender. We we're like, "I want the recipe." So, so did you have desserts? Yes. Yeah. So. You splurged on this one, huh? I did. I had okay. a caramelized ginger upside down cake that was in the style of a tart tartin, which is oh, just nice. gorgeous. And they had a creme fraiche ice cream, mm -hmm. which I'm thinking creme fraiche is no way it's going to translate into an ice cream because it's got that little slight sour cream piquant flavor, okay. but it did. Yes. Right. And it was stunning. Yeah. It was quite good, yeah. And what about your dessert? Because you went, mmm. Mm, yeah, it was ugly. <laughs> so we started off with the chocolate, there. Okay. chocolate dirty thing. That's a good thing, thing I think. Was you're it saying, dirty right? chocolate? Okay. Yeah, it was oh, almost oh, wonderful. Well, you know. All right. I think it's a chocolate dirty. And you're gonna get real chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. real chocolate, and it was, and the, even the little cup was chocolate, and I scraped all the nuts off because I don't eat nuts, but it was wonderful. So then we ordered a lemon tart, mm -hmm. and on the side, mm -hmm. and we had to taste it, and nice. it was just. <laughs> it was so good. It was worth it. And, and ugly in a good way. <laughs> ugly in That's a good way. That's what I was checking because I wasn't yes. sure when she went there. It was, yeah. it was because it was just ugly because we were just sitting there going calories, calories, calories. <laughs> it, was, oh, it was fantastic. So, yeah. what, calories, uh, calories, <laughs> calories. <Yeah. laughs> All right, Marie, Flea Street Cafe is your spot, so give us a quick summary. I consider it high end comfort food with a conscience. If you want a great restaurant with great flavors, a destination spot, this is the one for you. All right, Fabian. You know, for special occasions, I would go there. It's a little drive for me from Oakland down to San Mateo, but um, special occasions are oh, a great place. And just, if you don't even want to treat yourself. Yeah. It's the bomb. It's the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and William? Uh, a local star featuring great seasonal organic presentations that were without equal, I thought. I thought they were on par with some of the best restaurants in the Bay Area.
If you would like to try Flea Street Cafe, it's on Alameda de las Polgas in Menlo Park. The telephone number is 650-854-1226. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $55. Self-proclaimed food snob Casey Sassner loves the relaxed suburban attitude at her stylish destination with its large patio, planters filled with trees and pots of fragrant herbs. The kitchen creates modern cuisine with dishes that reflect influences from Europe and Asia. Casey, a sharp businesswoman with restaurant tastes to match, appeared in season eight to talk about her pick. In Lafayette, it's called Metro Lafayette. A restaurant is a place where people go to rejuvenate, to recharge. We like to think that we provide a setting for that. My name's Jack Moore, I'm the owner of Metro Lafayette. I think a good way to describe the cuisine at Metro would be modern American or a modern California cuisine. Fresh ingredients, top quality ingredients, and we'll use techniques that come from the Mediterranean, from Europe, or from Asia. I have a great love of French wine, so about half of our list is French but we also know that we're in California and there's some really great California wines, of course. You can have different crudo dishes. Fresh oysters are great. It's a classic bistro item or brasserie item. The patio here at Metro is just a great place to dine. We've got big mulberry trees that provide ample shade. There's French lavender. It's a really relaxing atmosphere to uh, enjoy either lunch or dinner or even weekend brunch. It's not unusual for someone to walk in and by the time they get to their table, they've said hi to three or four other tables because a lot of people from the immediate community do come in here quite often. Come in, relax, have a good time. We'll see you again in a couple days. All right, Casey, do you spend a lot of time on the patio at this restaurant? Did someone tell you that? <laughs> yes, I do spend I a lot of time. Sun I, look like I you spend a lot of more time than I would like to admit, but a lot of them are meetings. Mm -hmm. And it's just a wonderful place to sit and, and catch up with people. The service staff is gracious. The food is fantastic. I think it's kind of everything it needs to be. This is a restaurant that I've probably been to 30, 40 times. Mm -hmm. um, and I just find it's its consistency to be one of its mm. hallmarks, as well as the fact that it's a community spot. It, it has a very cool vibe. I mean, it's modern, it's fun. And we it had flows well. Yeah, we had a couple nice drinks. We had a we had a decent table. We what did actually, you have for drinks? Let's we talk about I those. had the Moscow Mule, and it, it was it was a nice one you know of my say? favorite. I cocktails. love Moscow Mules. Yeah, yeah. it was In really general, well executed, very very good. And we also had uh, I had a glass of Chardonnay with mm -hmm. my meal. The mm -hmm. Rombauer was amazing. It is a big um, lush. Kind of style of yes, but with the price tag too. With yep. the price it's tag for sure. So it was, it that said though, I would say that in general the wine list is pretty open Absolutely. to most palates and most budgets. I don't know what your experience is with the bartenders, but they are amazing. Mm -hmm. The wait staff there is so interested in making you happy, and, and I hope that service that was, was your amazing. experience. No, service, service is definitely was amazing. very good. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of your favorite dishes. Well, the first thing that I have every time I go there, and sometimes friends and I get more than one order, is the crispy Brussels sprouts, and I hope you guys got to try those. But they're they're deep fried, but yet they retain very little oil. They, they almost taste like they're roasted, completely caramelized with an aioli uh, on the side and a wedge of lemon. That sounds good. That's one, yeah, of that's my, good. one of my absolute favorite dishes there. Mm -hmm. They have an ahi tuna that they do a beautiful job with. That's really about the tuna. Um, the tuna is really fresh. Nothing at Metro overwhelms uh, the main ingredients. Simplicity is really well done with all they do. And what did you have when you went, Kane? So I had the quail as well as the miso cottage, my mains, mm -hmm. and then I had the duck confit spring rolls. Okay. So with the quail itself, we basically had like an arugula and spicy greens outside with some of the also green olives. Mm -hmm. And it was trying to complement the dish, but nothing really completely hit home. I don't know, as a general comment, I would say for all dishes that well executed, but sort of missing that real comfort of the chef of I can take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. I think and I, same. I think it's yeah. like really well done, like the quail perfectly well cooked, but I was waiting for a bigger flavor hit. I've never had the quail, uh -huh. um, but I'm curious to hear what you think of the black miso cod because oh, miso that's one good. of my favorites. So the miso was great for two reasons. 
One is that it was a great flavor profile. It wasn't overwhelming. It was a nice light dish. But the other reason is I only ate half of it there and I ate half of the next day. And obviously, cod stays well, but more importantly, the miso really stayed well to warm up the next day. We had the meatball appetizer. Mm -hmm. We also had the duck convite spring rolls, which were amazing. Mm -hmm. The meatballs were my favorite out of all of the appetizers. They were, they tasted like something your grandmother made. They were perfectly moist, delicious. They came with a little side of bread. They were just perfect to me. All right, and what about the spring rolls? Kane, I'll let you guys both talk about So this. I think the, the duck confit itself was a little dry, mm -hmm. but the lime sauce that they had with it really comforted that and really gave it the moisture that you needed. Have you ever eaten the halibut there? I usually have the black uh, miso okay. cod, the petrale sole, which I love. That was also that's recommended. See, I'm a big mm -hmm. halibut girl and I was, I enjoyed the drinks and I enjoyed the appetizers and I was really looking forward to my entree because I was having an amazing time. And when the halibut came, it was just, uh, it just didn't oh, do no. it for me. Like you said, well, I mean, the, was it the sauce, well? was it, it, was, okay. it was executed perfectly, except that our server warned us, he said, I hope you like cilantro. So when I, it came, I was expecting a really big punch of cilantro, mm. and it was just very mild. I think yeah. that the kitchen has sort of an austere approach um, mm. to food. Mm -hmm. For example, petrale sole has a beautiful flavor. If you don't overdo it, you, you could really, you could mm -hmm. over sauce it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you could overcook it. And what I love is that it tastes like petrale sole. Mm -hmm. And the, the whipped potatoes, which are really easy to make them too fattening on the palate, um, they're just perfect and, and a, a nice accompaniment to the fish. And what about dessert? Among I you? had, the, yes. What um, did you have? We had the, uh, the tart. Uh, the apple tart was amazing. It was perfect. It had a creme fraiche dollop on there. We also had the creme brulee. The creme brulee was perfectly cooked. It was a nice glass top on your creme brulee. So it's just, it was incredible. So the, basically the, you're going for a Moscow Mule, Chardonnay, and dessert. Exactly. I feel like I getting. would go back with, for apps and dessert <laughs> and drinks. And in, you know? is there a dessert that you would recommend uh, to everybody? Uh, well, the most recent thing that I had, and it, it's exceptional to me that the chef makes the, it's not a pastry chef, he's making mm -hmm. those desserts mm -hmm. as well. We had a banana walnut bread pudding with a homemade caramel whipped cream that was barely sweetened, um, some blueberries on top that were very fresh, and that's the other thing, everything's fresh there. Mm -hmm. And this is light and custardy and just was a terrific dessert, one of the best I've had. All right, this is your restaurant. Give us a quick summary. Okay, Metro brings a little bit of cool city vibe to the suburbs, superlative staff, and fantastic food. All right, and Kane. You go there for execution. It's really well done. It's just missing a little bit of that, I know, that energy that you want to feel in your mouth. All right. And if I was in Lafayette with a group of girlfriends, I would go for the drinks and a great happy hour and probably hang on the patio, which I didn't get to enjoy. If you would like to try Metro Lafayette, it's on Plaza Center on Mount Diablo Boulevard in Lafayette. The telephone number is 925-284-4422. It's open every day for lunch and dinner with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $45. Food policies, rituals, and traditions are close to the heart of blogger Leanne Battelle. She appeared in season nine where she shares information about local ingredients around the Bay Area. Her travels led her to a place where the grass grows wild and the wildlife roams free, at a farm outlet, butcher shop, and restaurant. Here, the pasture to plate philosophy is practiced with skill. So head to Point Reyes to find Marin Sun Farms, butcher shop, and restaurant. Point Reyes is a unique place. The pastures are green most of the year. The cows are out on the pasture. It's very visible, the agricultural production. My name is David Evans, and this is the Marin Sun Farms Butcher Shop in Point Reyes Station. <laughs> Marin Sun Farms is an extension of my family's ranch and my roots here in Point Reyes. I opened the Marin Sun Farms Butcher Shop in 2005 with the idea of customers buy direct from us and taste how we prepare our meats the best. My name is Paul Bondic. I manage the butcher shop, I manage the restaurant, and I make sure all of our guests have a nice time when they're here. It's a unique situation where they can come in and pick anything out of the meat case and we'll cook it up for them. It's the true definition of farm to, to plate. All of the meat here is 100% grass-fed, pasture-raised, and food shed sourced, and we like to make sure things are cooked nicely and seasoned well. On my ranch, I raise beef cattle and chickens for eggs, and I've networked with a number of other sustainable producers around the, the state that produce different meats under the protocol that Marin Sun Farm puts out. 
I want customers to come away with a sense of place. They're supporting the surrounding area and its agricultural roots and the sustainability of its lands. But there's three to four hundred other restaurants and artisan butcher shops in the Bay Area and Los Angeles that are purchasing our meats so that customers all around California can access these meats without having to come all the way to Point Reyes Station to do it. Leanne, there is no need for the term, where's the beef, <laughs> huh, in this place. I mean, no. I am a meat lover. This is about meat, it real is. meat. Thankfully, they changed their signage to show that it is a restaurant and not just a butcher shop because I used to drive by it. I went in and I've been going ever since. It's just a great casual spot. And you can sit outside, can't you? Yes, and their herbs are growing around mm -hmm. the periphery of the outdoor area. They have about five or six uh, burgers each day, um, from goat to chicken to obviously the beef. And in fact, the day that I was there, they had a special, which was a combination of filet and New York strip steak that they ground into a burger. The burgers are juicy and substantial, and each one is prepared in a different way. Uh, the beef burger this particular day had uh, Gruyere cheese melting all over the top, and their house-cured bacon. <laughs> Bacon. Their buns come from Stinson Beach and are so yummy, and a, and a light side salad with a champagne vinaigrette. Right. It's just and really, really Let's talk a little really bit more tasty. about the meat because David Evans, this is a yes. a, a, a farm, For, really. Fourth this generation a, cattle farmer. That's right. Yes, and they have a co-op up there in Point Reyes. It's a great place right. to start or I to end the day it. and you get some meat to take that's home right. to grill when at home. You can walk into a so place and you can see your meat there, yeah. freshly ground. The, the, the freshness of the vegetables and how uh, generous they are. When they make soups, but I think the key to those soups is the stock. And they go through this whole multi-step process to make the stock. stock. And it's in the and freezer. It's so you can buy it. You, you, yeah. Yeah. And tell me what you had to eat. That's that was life-changing. I want to hear. First, I have to say, though, is the wine list one. was great. Mm -hmm. It went well with the meal. And cold um, local beers. I mm -hmm. love it. I love the fact that I can order a beet and arugula salad. I had that, with which was very good, with the Point but Reyes Blue Cheese. Blue. Point Reyes Blue. Mm, it was so blue good with that flavorful cheese with the earthy you want. beets. It was a mm -hmm. great combination. So good, and it was big. Let's see, we had rosemary beer battered um, onion rings. Uh, we also had the Brussels sprouts. Right. <laughs> okay, those, wait a minute, wait a are minute. Are those outrageous? Those were the best fried Brussels they, sprouts. They I've fried them in pork ever. lard. No one so can do them. No one can do them the way they did They're crispy and flaky and they with this oily. willowing fresh like parmesan, parmesan that pours like, over the top of the Matt, you want to jump in this girl fest right. here or what's going on? It was great. <laughs> I had the goat burger and I did not know what goat meat was going to taste like by itself but it was delicious. It was herbaceous and barnyardy. And <laughs> by itself, I probably wouldn't have the goat patty, but it's topped with a chev cheese, some caramelized onions, some mushrooms, and you put them all together. It was just very creamy and luscious, and it was very filling. It was not a huge piece of meat, but all together, very satisfying, and I'm glad I made that choice. We also got the fried chicken sandwich. Oh. Uh, a little hard and messy to eat because it was just bursting mm -hmm. over the bun, but it was still delicious. Okay. I did find the meat quality of all the proteins to be top notch, and obviously yeah. you pay a little bit more for yes. that kind of meat yeah. than with other places. Yeah. And I did find the sandwiches on the sandwich portion of the menu yeah. to be reasonable for the quality yeah. and how much you get. Mm -hmm. I did find um, the entrees, the steak and fries, steak frites combination, mm -hmm. there were 20 different proteins that you mm -hmm. can purchase or right. match up. Mix in different ways. Mix, mix and it match, yeah. You can yeah. pick anything exactly. from the case right. for a flat fee of $12, and they'll prepare it any way you like. Well, in addition to Plus what the rate is. So yeah. I was yes. thinking of that, and if I went back for dinner, you can potentially pay up to $32, $33 for that a entree. Great and for steak. a casual no, yeah. place, <laughs> you're going to eat the you're best, gonna, baby. You're, you're going to eat it. You're going to eat it. Yeah, you have to get in that mindset. Do I want to go to a formal steakhouse, or do I want to go there and prepare to pay for that? A way to do it is to maybe on your way out of Point Reyes yeah. to pick up something and, and grill it at home. I have to say mm -hmm. though, it's kind of bummed me out a little bit. Was the fries? They were really limp. They oh, were just limp's not kind good of in a fry. like not mm -hmm. not crunchy at all. Maybe, they were just kind of limp. Maybe a bad batch. We found the fries to be very delicious. And you the house made really? ketchup. That's oh, really house good. House made ketchup. My son yeah. did Great not ketchup. want to give me the French fries. I'm give so us a, happy. Give yes. us a quick wrap up. If you're looking for a true California farm to table experience, juicy burgers, satisfying sides, check it out. Hope you're not a vegetarian. <laughs> okay, and Matt. Wouldn't drive an hour out of my way just for a burger, but if I was spending the day or the weekend in the Point Reyes area, I would 
most likely go back and try a different one of their proteins, a different burger or sandwich. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Angelo, you have to go. <laughs> Be adventurous. Go for it. You'll love it. I will definitely go again and again. If you would like to go to Marin Sun Farms Butcher Shop and Restaurant, it's on Shoreline Highway 1 in Point Reyes. They also have a butcher shop in Rockridge Mall in Oakland. For the restaurant, the telephone number is 415-663-1800. It's open for lunch and early dinner Friday through Sunday with lunch Monday and Thursday. Reservations are not accepted and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. We hope you've enjoyed visiting these three great spots. Go check them out thanks to Marie President. Her restaurant devoted to sustainable agriculture and flavorful cuisine is Flea Street Cafe in Menlo Park. And Casey Sassner, who introduced us to a classic bistro experience, whether it's dining inside or on the patio at Metro Lafayette in Lafayette. And Leanne Battel, who takes us to a place where family and heritage makes for the ultimate farm to fork experience at Marin Sun Farms Butcher Shop and Restaurant in Point Reyes. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sirocco, and I'll see you then. Cheers! So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Check Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This, where we celebrate food and drinks around the Bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... IRG has in-trend surfaces, quieter marbles, and rare exotics. Over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin and at marblecompany.com. Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Support for KQED comes from Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with six Bay Area locations.